Welcome to Target Lock TV and the Swedish Open. This is a top eight cut uh, or top of eight game of the cut. And with me today, I have uh, Nick. Welcome, Hello, Nick, there. from um, Firestorm Firecast. Correct. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and we got two interesting players here. We got Julian Hood and Nicholas God. So, is this uh, cream of the crop, maybe? Do you think we will see... I, th I think we might see one of these players in the top table. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I mean, these guys are... These guys are fully clear... Sorry, fought each other quite a few times. There, there's some well-known names in the x community. They both travel a bit and have been in top cuts many times of regionals, system opens, nationals whatever you you will see these players names up there um both of them are doing well in the online scene as well mm -hmm. uh they they have played each other recently i think it was the one of the goal squadron events yeah um where julian managed to get the win but they're different lists that time um uh, not hyperspace not hyperspace. So it's an interesting uh matchup i think we have here i've got some volume in the background All right that needs to go away there we go done sorry So uh, Nicholas is setting up his all of his inquisitors, and um, Julian is bringing the aces here, saber squadrons. Do you, you want to break down the lists, maybe? Sure, sure. So I can run through who have we got uh, Julian's list. So he's got four of the I-4 Sabre Squadron Aces, all with Predator. Uh, so bringing some nicely modded shots coming in there with some high level of red dice. Mm -hmm. uh, followed by Vermeil um, with the Ion Overdrive Limiter. So Vermeil is means if, the, if all I-4 as well, which is really handy. So Vermeil might be the last one to shoot, hoping to force those token spends. Um, and then being able to use his ability to mod a blank dice to a... Uh, so one of his eyeball results to a hit for free. Yeah. Um, as well as that, he's got some interesting repositional um, options with the Ion Limit Overdrive. So for people who don't know what that is, it's actually fully execute a red maneuver, which would include the stop maneuver on mm -hmm. the um, Reaper. Yep. Uh, he can perform a barrel roll, even while stressed. Uh, if you do, you can roll tact eye uh, on a hit. You gain a strain token or a crit gain an ion token. So when you've only got one green agility, the strain token isn't <laughs> too much of an issue. No. Uh, when you've got a large base, the ion token isn't too much of an issue. So gives him some interesting reposition options there as well. Yeah, and uh, Reaper doesn't have um, barrel, or no, not normally. Not normally. So it's uh, it's uh, a move out of the blue. And we got uh, Nicholas is bringing all these Inquisitors. It's five of them with foresight. This is a game of uh, bull size. Indeed. <laughs> um, foresight is a scary, scary thing, especially when you've got five of them uh, and medium bases. So yeah. the slightly interesting thing that uh, Julian's going to have to be aware of is uh, Nicholas is going to be able to set up those bullseyes first. Mm -hmm. and be able to position those arcs so that Julian is going to have to land in them with his ships um, triggering, triggering their effect after executing their maneuver um, which means that the four side shots um, they spend a force and it's a range uh, one to three shot in bullseye two dice attack um, but they automatically change one of their eye roll results to a hit no other modifications are allowed on that attack dice yeah, and it can also be sp uh, used as a uh, um, as an ordnance weapon. Um, it's a in in the normal engagement phase, yeah. yeah. Then you don't have to spend that force, but um... nope, just a free mod. But you don't get any other mods on it, so it will depend on the situation. Being being at range three, it's definitely the dice to go with if mm -hmm. you can, if it's in bullseye, um, because it cuts out the extra green dice for the sabers. Um, 
and it can just depend on what mods you have available as to what you want to use. At <laughs> range 2, they, they've only got two dice attacks on the Inquisitors anyway. Mm. So there are times that that will certainly be a, a thing that they can use. Yeah, I mean, and then you can also use the, the Force as a defensive... Um, or no, let's see. Um, Julian is shooting first, so yeah. <laughs> But if if uh, you would be in the initiative position, uh, then you can use the foresight as a secondary weapon. Save your force for mm -hmm. double mod out of one force. And the, these inquisitors, for instance, they're really really tanky because you can, as you say, they can take evade actions. They can mm -hmm. and have the force as well. And force evade is a very difficult thing to get through. Um, so it's going to be an interesting thought of whether Julian's red dice can push through uh, those evades and that defensive dice to uh, take out a few ships. Um, the opening engagement is going to be key here, um, but both these players are, are well versed in doing that, so <laughs> we'll see how they approach. The, the setup of the rocks is interesting, and, and it looks like the, the debris that we've got in the bottom left hand corner of the screen that you can see is probably not going to play too much of a part in this game. <laughs> no. They place them to the side, basically. Yeah, we've got a nice big open channel for Nicholas <laughs> to fly through, he's very happy to be. Um, I didn't see, do you know who brought what obstacles? I can have a look. Let's... I missed, I missed out on that. Nicholas brought the debris. Ah, interesting. So he just wanted them out of the way. In this particular match, looking to get all his ships in position. So, this looks like a joust to me. Yeah, it's really aggressive starting. <laughs> it looks like we might have a, a second quick game on the stream today. And uh, I know for a fact, we had Julian on before, that he is a fast player. Not wasting any time. I'm not sure the Joust favours Julian. I'm wondering if he might split off a bit and get positions. Because wherever possible he has to try and avoid these bullseyes is just... Yeah. Because <laughs> at that point... Red dice versus green dice, the one with the mod, even though it's two versus three, that the reds are going to wing. They're just going to plink through that little bit of damage here and there. With only three hull on the interceptors, it's not a good way to, to kind of <laughs> stay alive, I guess. using his nice pre-saved large tokens yeah <laughs> this is uh focus to boost interceptors if that is range three from the two green on either side that initial engagement will favor julian just that little bit yeah I think uh, Nicholas made a mistake not checking the foresight arc, or do you think it's just... No, no, because the, the boost won't trigger the foresight arc. No, that's true. So this, this is why I think um, Julian's approaching quite an interesting way, but it means if it's a 1v1 there, the interceptor's got the slight <laughs> upper hand um, just because of the number of red dice. Yep. Same number of greens, extra, extra red dice. It's a very slight. I think Julian is trying to position himself in such a way here that he isn't going to um, trigger bullseyes in the next engagement as much as possible. Interestingly, the um, pre-boost from <coughs> the Reaper will trigger the bullseye mechanic. <laughs> yeah, because it's a movement. It's not uh, a the ailerons, yeah. adaptive ailerons is a maneuver. Oh yeah, so there's actually two ships in range three here. Yeah. Our forever reigning world champion saying that uh, Green Inky's in a little <laughs> bit of trouble here. Might be. So, all dice should be rolled in the dice box. Yeah, 
probably just take the results from that and put them in there. I think I'm really good. Unlucky for you again. That's right, getting Predator. It's uh, two. That's probably going to save the focus for the defense there. That's with seven. two shots coming in. Oh, two evades. Gets the one he needs. Yeah. Second shot. Using a. Uh, using foresight. He spends his force. I have a uh, evade. Focus token. Sorry. So I am wondering if we're going to see like a, a hard turn from pink. Yeah. To try and to come down flank. the board and then get round and flank a bit. Potentially yellow following suit. Yeah. Try and split up and split away from these bullseyes. Let's see which way Nicholas. Well, he could he could turn off and go around the gas as well, trying to intercept the purple or pink interceptor. <laughs> I think it's more likely that he'll just sit forward here spread towards yeah. where he knows the where he knows Vermeil is going to be yeah That's just my guess so have those arcs that way Vermeil is the main target I wouldn't say the main target but certainly being able to shut him down early is a thing yeah uh, looks like Nick's just gonna line up and sit straight here I'm hoping for Julian's sake that he will okay. turn away and come in around the side if he can get there Nice formation flying. Yeah, this is a Sweden versus UK game as well. So we, there's no shame in rooting for one, one or the other player. <laughs> Thank you for the shadows in the chat. I see you. <laughs> I could say something that I know would annoy both Dom and Pond, but I might refrain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yep. this is a bump. Yeah, so one force I trigger here. If we can see it. Two hits. Unmodded defense roll. Two in. That leaves uh, mm. that's half points on green. I'm a little bit surprised that Junior decides to just head straight in there with that. Yeah, that's uh, that interceptor. And here we got another um, from red. Foresight. Yep, just in. Uh, it won't be obstructed though, despite the overly shown that it is, because it will be the bullseye yep. only. <laughs> just looking at pon pons in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, I had a great run. Oh, 
Oof. Oh, just. <laughs> Bit of, a, bit of a close shave there, Phil. Phil was in top 16 and uh, unfortunately he had to leave us there. Uh, but we were what were you trying to say is he had to lose. That's what <laughs> yeah. you were saying. That's, that's <laughs> in a very I'm nice way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I mean, he did. He was running two fire sprays against uh, six barons. Uh, with prockets, so they yeah. just the, the mini bases just can't contend with that. And so, um, I think he had nearly every ship of the list, but just couldn't get the kill shots he needed mm. uh, to win the game. Um, he approached it, supposed talking to him earlier. He said, both his opponent and himself agreed that he approached it as best he could, um, <laughs> but just the dice on occasion didn't help. That's my polite way of putting it. Anyway. Well, shit happens, you know. <laughs> that's it. that's the thing about X-wing. <laughs> so this is a cluster of. Um... Yes, yeah, so I think what Julian's trying to do here is he's, he is getting himself into positions to get those shots, get those as, get those range ones in, yeah. um, and he's just going to try an initiative kill. One or two, if possible, um, <laughs> of these. Barons, which is not an easy thing to do, but Nicholas has gone very offensive by taking the focus tokens. Um, to Mill throws himself in there with no yeah. action. Um, but again, that's actually negating a shot or two into Vermeil. So we're going to try and just pump the damage through. So I reckon you see yellow, <laughs> not yellow. But uh, has uh, red uh, interceptor moved yet? Yeah. Uh, nope, not yet. Oh yeah, it's foresight. Sorry. The foresight. Um... <laughs> so give me at least one going through here. Yeah, two. Yeah, getting two. Does he make that? Yeah, I think that's, that's clear cool. bullseye. Let's we'll check him. But... Yeah, oh. No foresight for that one. Good move there from Julian. Just take the focus. And then barrel rolling to give him the predator shot. Yep. Is clearing out who, uh, what uh, inquisitors still got their fours. So we've got at least two interceptors got double mono shot into the yellow. Yeah, so that's the target. Predator roll. Oh, Two hits. Two evades. So a very good start for Nicholas. Yeah. It's those um, green dice, you know? <laughs> yeah, trying to Range focus one. down that yellow. Predator. It's three, two hits, one crit. Two unconverted pattern shots, but still a strong shot. Go and one shield, right? one shield, yeah. What you really wants to do is force that token spend now. Mm -hmm. Two more shots, is it, with the. Uh... Vermeil and uh, pink on uh, yellow. Mm. 
been just trying to decide what we're going with next i guess Julian will be talking through every decision he's making right now. <laughs> talking about all of the maths, the odds. Yeah, Julian is uh, a statistics guy. Definitely. Was this on uh, green on green? Yeah. It's uh, three hits. Oof. Nicholas blanks out. Still survives. The green is um... the only one Vermeil can't shoot. Yeah. But there is still a shot from uh, Pink Saber Squadron. Yep. And Pink has Predator, range yep. two. This is what Junior needs to go through now. He needs to get that one damage. <clears throat> oh, that's not going to do it. No. Green's got focus and force, so. Oh. Uh. Oh, did. Oh, he has the he... shot on green? I... What did he bump okay. into? He bumped his own green. Oh, wow. Yeah. But no mods, so that's just one hit there. And that's one of eight. So Niklas is pretty happy with this, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's what Niklas wants. He wants to have all his ships on the board to be able to shoot this turn. Uh, again, it's going to be the same sort of thing for him. Just take off a ship if he can. Yeah. Going at the unmodded, uh, sorry, the untokened um, interceptor green, green at the front. Spence focus. Uh, and it's a reward going for the, the lost. And he's gone. Yeah, I only need the one to go through on that one. Yeah. The power of foresight doing two damage in the initial. So I guess Vermeil might take some damage here. I'm not I think... sure. I think this might go into the interceptors because if he can get rid of them, Vermeil's yeah. easy pickings. I mean, he's got a yellow interceptor without tokens here. I say he does have a range one, but he is going to yellow. Yeah. One. That's evaded. Nice and safe. Keeps on shooting at the yellow. Yeah, it's it's the one without the mods. It's the one you've got a red dice are better than greens. Two v three is a pretty close close thing. Yeah, here we go. Focus to focus. hit crit. And the Take crit is going through. Structural damage. Oh, that's not helpful. Do you know how I said about like having three greens against two reds isn't too bad? <laughs> well, having three greens against Two, uh, three reds against two greens, that is bad. So that yeah. will be most likely a dead ship. At least a crit through this round. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Boom. Ow. Nicholas is clearing uh, clearing out the way so that he can K-turn. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So the range one is for meal. Yeah, we, we do know that the ships should all, of course, remain to the oh. end of the engagement phase, but just for ease, we know that ship's not going to be shot again. The guy's just moving it out of the way. And he's got no uh, game effects. Uh, that's uh, last thing there. Do you thought he was going into the interceptor, but mm -hmm. going into so for meal, taking two more. This has been a 
good run for round for Nicholas. He's ahead by 100 points to 20. Yeah, it's gonna be a real uphill struggle for Julian now. And it does look like we will have a short, <laughs> short game on the stream again. And the V1 chassis in general is just in such a strong place at the moment. Mm -hmm. In hyperspace, I mean, I mean, even in extended, it's it's not a bad list. No, it, no, it's not. Like, it's really strong, and the the six uh, barons with or or seven barons, depending on what you feel like. If you've got two thread traces, you can take seven barons. If you've got um, six with prockets, quite a few variations, but very good dial. Very survival with the evade token being able to be taken. Um, just a lot of strengths to that chassis. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah Jin got a li little bit unlucky with his predator rerolls there. But not being able to even kill even one of the Inquisitors in that round has, has cost him dearly. Yeah. I'm not really sure how he gets out of this one. Something happened to Tabletop Simulator. Oh. Let's just go out and see what's going on. And we're back. We had a little bit of a technical issue here and got logged out of TTS.
It's alive. Yes. Clear out this card. So it looks like all the dials have been reassigned. Can see the game a little like better now. We were in setting maneuvers phase anyway, so the guys are just going to reset their dials. Yeah. Get it all back online. Well, stuff like that happens. <laughs> yes. I blame computers. So this wouldn't happen in real life. Except for the UK system <laughs> open when all the lights go out. <laughs> There's always that to, to rely on. That was, that was so amazing. You had like players with their phones out, with torches, trying to play the game. We're like, no guys, just stop. Just stop what you're doing. Because <laughs> we'll wait. The lights will come back. <laughs> it's fine. It's like the stream tables can work, they've got their own lighting. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So what what is your prediction here? Do you think Julian has a chance to uh, uh bringing this I mean, game back? There's always a chance, mm -hmm. but it's a slim one. Yeah. Um <laughs> Julian kinda has to hope a little bit that the uh the dice gods decided, well, we need to give Julian a chance now. And, and the reset might help. <laughs> it's not really it doesn't really work that way but you know um so but it, i mean it's interesting i don't know where the inquisitors almost have a better turnaround except for the fact that they move first yeah um because they still have the force they still have that mod once they do that turnaround uh, kind of curious if you're going to see the stop uh barrel roll from uh vermeil yeah. That looks like Nicholas is happy to just sit here and point all his arcs this way. It's the first key not. turn. Go. I'm gonna start the time. Looks like it's gonna do this nice little kill box just in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, very tight. Uh, Landing behind the red. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Trying to cut off as many possible ways for them to well, probably just, yeah, bumps here so that we can't over. Yeah. That's two foresight triggers about to happen. Yes. We got brown and yellow. And bright. Metal to the foresight here. He's saving it. <laughs> Waiting for Vermeil. Which I find strange. Because if Vermeil stops, if Vermeil does do the stop right now, he's going to get one, one foresight trigger, I think. Maybe two. But he doesn't. Okay. He bumped there. If he would have stopped, then uh, red would have a foresight trigger as well. Oh, he still might stop actually because he has to do the eight rounds first, doesn't he? There we go. Silly neck. Two hits. That's two damage. So two hull left on Vermeil. That's out, is it? Mm. I'm not sure. I guess so. There you go. <clears throat> There's a oh, barrel. something. <laughs> <laughs> so he's Arc Dodge Brown. Uh, the Brand Inquisitor. Not red, not yellow, and not green. So, I think it's going to be everything into blue here, in my guess. It does, however, take the damage from the overdrive limiter. Oh no, strain, sorry. Yeah. I even read that earlier. 
It's <laughs> not oh, damage at all. It's a strain or an ion. Okay, so going into the untokened uh, Blue Inquisitor means his ability is active here. Yes. Which does make a difference. Three hits. He's got the force stop. And he don't need ah. it. Gets that to eight. <laughs> Julian doesn't like uh, bad dice, though. No. No, he does not. Um, I'm not sure any people do like red no. dice. Uh, bad dice, to be fair. That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's like the first conversion we've seen for a predator. But it's only yes. to a paint, not a hit. So. <clears throat> it's evaded. So now is the Vermeil shot. Into blue? Yeah. Uh, this that's is a good looking shot. better. Take that. <clears throat> Hit crit crit. And that's two two shields. Oh no, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm very surprised that Julian approached the way he did. I think that's been the uh, the issue in this game is, is trying to out joust these inquisitors. It's just not done him the favors he needed. No. Oh, so this is the shot into Vermil, yeah. Oh, Vermil is gone. I think he needed to uh, use the ace because <laughs> he essentially has in this game he essentially has five aces. Yeah. Over over the inquisitors, he needs to. Kind of split up, um, pull them around, pull them through the obstacles, get them to do all the maneuvers. I know that would potentially leave one of his ships, or maybe two, uh, vulnerable for a time. Yeah. But if you try and approach them as a block, you're just not going to get it. They're too resilient. See, oh, red saber squadron is taking one damage. Had shot into red. Fence force for hit crit. And takes the crit. It's gone. Oh. Straight up, just bye bye. Yeah, <clears throat> and we will have a sh range one shot into the pink. One hit. Okay. So pink can evade this. Pink against the world. Everything is fine. <laughs> it's all fine. Yes. There <laughs> we go. Last shot into pink. Range two. One hit. Just one. Again, pink can survive. Oh. Taking that. So, <clears throat> this is an uphill. <laughs> and Julian is conceding <laughs> this game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it, it was an interesting game. Yeah, I think and... if, if Julian, when he looks back and kind of goes, actually, why did I, JS, why are, the, why are these obstacles the way they are? Allowing the Inquisitors to be in that big block and just go, yeah, we're just going to go here. I think when you've got, as I say, four four proper aces with, with double reposition um, and, and Vermeil, that can be that punch bowl, essentially. Yeah. Um, didn't quite didn't quite match up. I think he's probably played a lot of the games of yesterday and maybe even today where he has been able to out joust things because of the double mods because of the, the coordinate or whatever um but this maybe just wasn't the game that would work for that now uh, a big thank you to julian for playing this tournament and congratulations niklas and we still have so much time left on the clock so um, well nick you guys are having an event on in uh, in a short while so do you want to say something about that 
Yeah, thank you. So, um, I believe it's the 24th of April, 23rd of April. So it's that weekend anyway. We're running a two-day extended event uh, called the Firecast Cup, um, which you will find on Facebook. Uh, it's on Tabletop TO as well. Search it on there. Um, and we have our Discord, uh, which is the Firecast Squadron. Uh, um, and you can find us on there and find out information. About it. We're running some... Uh, very big prizes. I've I've paid out a chunk of money already uh, for some um, pre-painted alternate artwork ships done by Enigma Wargaming. Cool. Um, so there'll be one for the top of each faction, uh, and also a particularly special one for the winner. Um, and that's the prize we have confirmed so far. Mm-hmm. But we are in chats with um, various other people, such as Cargo Two and the likes, for doing templates and, and things for Top Sixteen. Uh, top 32 tokens and various bits and pieces as well as well as participation prize you get get an old art um uh, or three because i think we're each going to choose one uh from the three of us at the firecast and we will do all the old arts and get them posted out as part of the ticket price cool that sounds awesome yeah, fun. so uh, and, and, look forward to seeing you in the in the list yeah i i'm gonna try to save up some wife points and spend them all on <laughs> <laughs> sounds great <laughs> I also put a uh, link in the show notes today, uh, so everybody should Excellent. go in and check out the Firestorm um, Firecast, uh, Firecast, Firecast, Firecast uh, <laughs> Twitch page. That too. Thank you very much. Cool. But we're going to wrap it up and we will be back later on today and there will be a schedule posted uh, in the meantime while we're waiting. So yeah, thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for running a great event. <laughs> I got to play yesterday. It was awesome. And for running such a great stream as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, everybody who's watching, we've got a lot of people right now. So, well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Goodbye. <laughs>